Hello again. It's Kate Brown Pernia for Why Not a Hat. Today we're going to do something really special. Uh, we're going to work with wire and make a fascinator. But first, let's talk about what we did in the last two videos. Remember when we made this hat and we finished it in the last video, but I forgot to tell you how to keep it on your head. Here's the trick. On the inside of the hat is a piece, a double loop of wire, which makes what I call a spring -a, a little piece like this that snaps to the back of your head and holds the hat on securely. If you want a little extra security, if you have a lot of hair like I do, you can stick a hat pin through it too. But anyway, I'm glad that we forgot because this technique by which we made the spring is the technique that we're going to use for our fascinators. We're going to wrap wire and make headbands and a fascinator. So now let me turn the camera, introduce you to my friend who's going to help us today, and we'll get started on a fascinator. This is my friend Marina, and she's wearing a fascinator that she has made. How many uh, of these have you made, Marina? I have made seven fascinators. Seven, and she's good at it. So she's going to help us today. Uh, let's point this down to the work table and get started. So here we go. What we have here is a piece of quilting cotton. And I want to talk a little bit about how we're going to wrap the wire with fabric. We're going to use a bias strip. And now what is a bias? Fabric, this fabric is woven of cotton and it's woven warp and weft and the cutting across warp and weft is your bias. You want to cut bias because it makes it a little bit stretchier. So I'm going to take my see-through ruler here and set it at the half inch mark and use my great rotary cutter to cut a strip need to cut a little bit more here. Quilters use these a lot and they're great. You can also use scissors if you don't have a rotary cutter, no problem. It's just a little easier and quicker if you have one. So that's how we cut a bias strip. We're not gonna do any more because I already have several done to save us a little time. So now let's get started on our wire. What we have here is number 19 millinery wire which you can get from any millinery supplier, like Judith M or Hat Supply, or there are any number of them. We're going to overlap the ends of the wire about an inch, and then we're going to tie it off with tie wire, which is this very fine 30 gauge wire that uh, you can get at any craft store. Michaels, Joann's, a lot of places have it. I'm going to wrap it tightly. And why are we using those paper scissors, Marina? Uh, so we don't dull other scissors that we use for other things. Like fabric, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you want to cut that for me? Close, and this one too. And then we're going to bend those edges over so we don't poke ourselves. And now we're going to get started with our fabric wrapping. I want to make sure that... Yeah, okay. We're going to wrap these, this wire with these bias strips. And how do we start this? We um, bend our... Nope. Uh, Fabri-Tac glue. Yeah, we use Fabri-Tac glue to glue on um, the fabric. We're just going to start it with just a little dab of this glue. This is an acetone base glue, so you want to work it with it in a well-ventilated place. You can probably hear my air conditioner going there in the background. It's very hot here today. So we're going to start this by a strip. Oh, you know what? But we'll wrap it and then we'll twist it. Mm. I forgot. There's a step that I left out, but that's okay. It might be easier to wrap it this way anyway. Yeah. Live and learn. So you see how we sort of pull it 
I got a little extra glue on there. How about giving me one of those clothespins and we'll clip the end. No, the end. There we go. There we go. And then one more. <clears throat> yeah. This glue dries pretty quickly. So, you want to continue your wrap for me? Sure. There you go. And remember to pull as you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right here, where the camera can see it. I'm going to check the camera and make sure we can see what we're doing here. And a way to get the glue off your hands is using nail polish remover. Yeah, if you get too much glue gooped on your fingers, a little nail polish remover will just do the job. Looking good there, Marina. Now I can see you. Now that I think about it, I think doing it this way is actually the better way to do it. Yeah, who knew? I'll show you what we what we mean about this in a minute. So Marina is going to work here and work work her way all the way around the wire until the wire is completely wrapped with fabric. And if we run out, if the strip isn't long enough, no problem. We'll just put another dab of glue on and start another piece of the orange. So now that we're getting close to a little bit, a little bit more. Now that we're getting close to the end, I'm going to put another little dab of glue on the wire or. There you go. Ooh, a little bit too much. Go ahead, wrap it. And then we're going to take a new piece of fabric and just wrap it on. Pull it good and tight. Whoopsie. I got tangled up there. My hands are not as flexible as Marina's, so I struggle a little bit more. Here we go. I think this one's a there little bit too go. long, but. That's okay, we can just cut it off at the end. Well, let's cut some of it off now because it's gonna get in your way. Tangled. Here we go. Like this. And let's, let's clip that with our clothespin. Clothespin. Good. There we go. There you go, you can keep wrapping. After a minute or two, she can take that clothespin off because this glue dries very quickly. The end. We use one more little dab of glue at the end to hold the wire, to hold the uh, fabric on the wire. Overlap it. Good. Now we'll use another dab. A little dab will do ya. Yep. Now put your clothespin on there to hold it and we'll let it dry for a minute or two and then we'll move on to the next step. And she's going to trim off that extra fabric. Excellent. <clears throat> looks good. That batik makes a really pretty wrap, doesn't it? Because it gives you a lot of color variation in it. And the bias edges fray just a tiny little bit, which gives you a fuzzy edge. And let's get a close-up of your fascinator. Turn the other direction. No, the other directions. There you go. You can see it looks almost like chenille because the little edges of the fabric fray just enough to make it pretty. You ready? Okay. I think it's probably dry enough to trim. Now comes the fun part. We're going to shape it, right? The part that we skipped before. Now, 
we're going to twist it into a figure eight. And you want to pinch pinch the waist the waist there, right in the middle. And we're going to tie it with another piece of this tie wire, like we're wrapping a present. Keep your hand there. I'm, I don't want to poke you with the wire, but well, maybe I I, I should do it. <laughs> maybe it's be easier. I'm just gonna I'm I'm not gonna use a lot of wire because we're gonna. wrap it with another piece of the um, bias so that the wire doesn't show. But see you here let me use my I can get a, I can get a tighter twist if I use my pliers. And now we can use our paper scissors to cut off that edge. Oh close, close. well that's okay. I'm going to bend that down, and then we're going to take a, just a small piece. Here, this is a small. This is a good there size. We go. Well, this one's got glue on it, so let's uh, let's, okay. let's use another one. Yeah. Save ourselves Oops. some time. <laughs> and we'll put just a little mm -hmm. dot of glue on there. Mm -hmm. And then we wrap it a little bit. Wrap it a wee bit to cut to to hide that wire. And we'll finish it off with another dab of glue at the bottom. Sometimes I do this twisty thing first and then we wrap it. Today we just did it a different way, just to keep it interesting. Now let's clip that nice and tight. There we go. A little bit farther out. Yeah, there you go. There we go. And let's close up our glue so it doesn't dry out on us. So, what do we do next? Next, we attach on. Nope, not well, yet. We're going to shape the wire. We shape the wire. We tug it a little bit at the sides, and then later we shape it to our head. So what we're going to do is take this and just pull it lengthwise to get a little bit of a point, and then we're going to just use our fingers to fine tune that. Mm -hmm. And I think we can trim off that excess. You want to go at it from an angle there. There you go. Get, get in there a little bit closer. Yeah. You just can't do it to a little bit more. Good. There. Now. We're going to shape this. It was a little crooked there, so I'm going to bend it just over my fingers just a little bit so that it will look more like a headband. And you can make it thinner or wider depending on what your preference is. Get that a little bit better straightened out. a little bulky. I'm going to cut a little bit more of that fabric off. We don't want a big knob on the top of it. So now the next step is to do the trim. And what we have here is a purchase flower that I got at M&J Trim many years ago. But you can make you can make flowers to go on these fascinators too. That's another class. Uh, Galena Kotha teaches some beautiful leather and silk flower making classes. You can find her online if you're interested in really going to the ultimate. But today we're going to use this purchase flower. And where is a lady's hat generally trimmed, Marina? On the right side. On the right hand side, right. So, 
I think about like that. Yes, that looks good. Okay, so what we're going to do is take the stem of this flower, bend it down next to the um, wire on our fascinator, and we're just going to use a small piece of our bias. Maybe we should use just a little bit of wire. No, I don't think we need to. I don't think we need to. I don't like um, overdoing the wire. So let's, could you open that for me? Another little dab of glue to start another, another wrap. Yeah, I'll take it here. Oopsie. Everything's falling. Can you put a little dab right there? Of course. You can hide the end of the stem here. Just on the stem. On the stem. There you go. Good. That's enough. That's enough. Yeah. And just use our fingers to mold it. And our clothespin to hold it for a minute or two. Now what I'm going to do is bend this flower towards the front because we want it to perch on the front of the fastener like that, don't you think? Yes. Yes. One more dab of glue at the end here, just on the stem. Yep. Over here. Yeah, that's good. That, that's plenty. Great. That's probably dry, so I'm going to move my pen to here. I'll use my scissors to trim off that end of that fabric. Now, if we needed to fluff out that rose a little bit, I forgot to talk about that before we put it on, so we'll just do it now. This is a technique that you'll use if you're um, trying to spiff up a vintage hat you found somewhere, or if you've got a pretty flower and it looks a little crushed, you can just take your steam iron and puff it with just a little bit of steam. Be careful not to burn yourself. Yes, be careful to keep your hand away from it and don't get too close to the flower because if there's glue holding the flower together, you don't want the glue to melt. So I think this one's fluffy enough. So you want to hold that for me while I put the iron away? So let's uh, finish by cutting off our extra. extra fabric here. Very close. There we go. And we're going to use just a little tap of glue to hold, you could either stitch it, in this case we're just going to glue it for speed's sake. Put a little dab there on the uh, on the wire. There you go. That's good. And then just hold that. Just pinch it with your fingers for a minute or so. And then we'll have you try it on, Marina. So, you want to take yours off and Let's put it on, and I'm going to get off the camera so we can get a good shot of you. Here she is. Good job. And now that you know how to do these wire fascinators, let us show you a few other things that you can do. Why don't you pick a few out of this box, Marina, to show. Put them down here on the table. Yep, this way. Can't see it needs to come here. This is a sim this is similar to the one that we just did, but it's a magnolia blossom. 
We have a feather duster. Well, it's not really feathers. It's polyester poof. Try try that one on. I'm gonna because you get the real impact of it. Isn't that hilarious? Kind of a showgirl, showstopper sort of thing. But I spotted this duster in the grocery store and thought, you know, that would look great on a hat. So why not? Here's a sort of bridal type piece. You want to put that put that on for us? That's nylon tool wrapped around the wire with a piece of horsehair or crinoline for a poof and then a a uh, flower ribbon made out of white sheer ribbon. So that's a little fancy one for a wedding. And how about this one? Oh, and the bunny ears. This one is a pink hat with um, deco a, mesh. A deco mesh and a little wire heart. Put it on. So you just take your wire technique a step further and put a little heart on there. Nice for Valentine's Day, huh? Now try the bunny ears. We did this for the kids for fun. Now this one's a little different. And instead of wrapping it with fabric, it's wrapped with fuzzy yarn. Cute little Easter head piece for the, cute, for the little ones. Now if you want to take your technique to the high point, here's what you can do once you've, had, you've become accomplished at wrapping wire. Hold yep. it. It's wrapping, it's wrapped wire with Put it on. some um, other fabric. Fabric scraps of, and a little bit more forward. Yeah, a little bit more forward and to the, to the side. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Fell off. <laughs> she needs a little help putting it on. Let me yes. help you put it on. So what you do is you put it on as an angle and then this little headband thing goes in the back. So let's take a look. Let me see through, look through the camera and see if we got it right. Yes, now that's how you wear a hat. So, thanks for coming to visit. And what do we say? Why not a hat? <laughs>